Have you ever wanted to blur something out or do some kind of a Photoshop technique but didn't really know how to do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that here. I'm working on a client's website called Revolution Aviation. Pretty cool company based out of Southern California. They teach helicopter flight lessons, among other lessons in other aircraft. But really, the helicopters are, are the coolest part, I think, and it's what they do the most. So let me show you a little technique. We have to get rid of, in, in the aviation business, you're supposed to get rid of basically the tail number, which... It's a pretty big deal. So let's do this real quick. We've got this slider on the front of the website. I'm going to go in and show you real quick how to, we're going to fix up some of these graphics so that we blur out that tail number, which is really the license plate of the aircraft, right? Every aircraft has one of these for the most part. we got to get rid of that thing that's on the tail. So let me show you a couple little techniques here in Photoshop. Now, Josh, are you a Photoshop expert? No. And I'm a businessman that had to learn this the hard way, and I'm going to show you couple scrappy tips. Rule number one is you got to set up Photoshop and jump in there. You need to have Photoshop. There's other programs that will do this for you. But let me show you this. If you do have Photoshop, and I have an older version, um, I zoom in just a little bit. Now, I've got a bunch of layers over here because I have different images that I want to show. And I put a certain dimension so that I can crop them and they all fit on the front of the website exactly the same size. I like to plan for success downstream. So let's do this. We want to get rid of this tail number. The first thing I do is I turn off everything uh, that except for that one that we want to work on. And then you see layer 4 over here, that's the one we're looking at. If I turned it off and turned it on, there you go. We're working just with that one. Next thing I want to do is go over this, this tiny lasso tool. Do you see this in the upper left? Click on la you've got a lasso, a polygonal lasso tool, and a magnetic. Let's just do the, the polygonal. Hold down your space key, it turns into a hand and you can move around. I hold, I hold the control plus and the control minus, control minus zooms out, control plus zooms in. And you can also do that using these little tiny buttons over here. You're probably like, Josh, I already know this stuff. Okay, cool. So let's take this polygonal tool real quick. What I do is get really close over here. As you can see, I clicked once on the far left. I click once about right here once about right here and I'm really just creating a polygon cool nice now here's the next trick I never work on this layer I always create a duplicate layer so what I'll do is with this layer highlighted I right click and I go layer via copy alright now it created a new copy that just has that but it didn't get rid of it if you did a layer via cut it would have cut that hole out of the original photo and put it into only the new photo so Let's go ahead and turn on the new one. Great. And layer 9 is that new one. Let's go ahead and work on that here real quick. Watch this. We're going to blur that area. So let me show you what it looks like. Let's do it without anything on. We're going to go to filter real quick. Blur. You could do a little bit of blur, blur more, box blur. Let's do Gaussian blur, which is really, really blurry. And then there's a little box that pops up, and it does a live preview. If it's a really big... It's a really big file. You don't live preview it because back in the day, computers used to bog down, but now we're fine. Computers are fast. Okay, so this is what we could probably do is just blur the heck out of that darn thing right there. Awesome. Now, you see how... Let, let's go see what that looks like. Let's click OK. We can always come back to it. Let's turn on the other stuff. See how that looks pretty cool, but it's not perfect still. We could uh, We could do a couple more little tiny things here to just make it... Um, a little bit more blurry. Now let me show you one more technique. So for this next technique what I've done is is done the exact same thing. We had the original layer that kind of bled over and I, I don't I don't really want to see any remnants of that thing. So here's another technique. Let's turn that one off. I now have another version did the exact same thing where I put the polygonal tool right clicked and said create a copy which created a new copy above it which is now layer 10 here's another technique we go over to filter and you make sure you have layer 10 highlighted the layer that you want to work on which is in front and you do blur and then we are going to in addition just do a shape blur now the shape blur keeps it a little bit cleaner and just blurs real it doesn't gaussian blur was too much for me so let's go ahead and make the shape blur okay make the radius really small and now Look at that. It gets gets rid of 99% of it. We throw the other one over. Wham. Perfect. So now most people that look at that can't even notice it. They don't see it. There's one more technique we could do. Pretty much 
mission accomplished, right? It's good. Is it great? No, but it's really good. We could also, let's say if we did the same darn thing, let's take it to the next step. Josh, how do we fix this even more? So let's turn off these other ones that are great. Let's go over here to this one and let's go and here's what we're going to do. Actually, we're going to exit out of this. We're going to go control D, which is deselect. You could also do select, deselect up here in the upper left. We're going to take this little tiny guy over here, which is called the clone stamp tool. And it's right over here. Click on it once, go to the clone stamp tool, which is the S. We're going to create the brush size. You can pick your brush size, whatever you want. We're going to make our brush size about mm, probably 10. Okay, now watch this. First things first, you click on the Alt button and see how it changes your icon? Now you Mac users, you can do something different, but click on the Alt button and you highlight something about right there. So watch, I'm aligning it towards the top because I'm going to take this data right about here and I'm going to put it right over here. Watch what happens. So let's go ahead and align it right there. Click. I clicked once and now when I click over here, I should be able to take a lot of this, and it's good. Is it perfect? Pretty close. Let's do that. Okay, so now I can, what I'm doing is I'm replicating the stuff on the left over to the stuff on the right, and because it's pretty darn parallel, it works pretty well, as you can see. You gotta get it really close, because otherwise, and this does take some practice. This really is like, learning how to use a uh, a knife when you're cooking you learn how to chop it up okay so we're kicking butt here hopefully you see how this is working awesome but because they're parallel from the beginning it takes stuff directly from the left puts it directly on the right um, and that's looking pretty nice another thing I might do is if if I see you see this thing right here I'm gonna try and get rid of that first and then go in because otherwise I would replicate that little box all over and you don't want to do that uh, then it looks like a pattern and it looks like you're faking stuff but really we're just trying to f get rid of that ugly blur that used to be there and you want to start from the left go to the right and I I click and release because otherwise you create a pattern so you gotta be careful now look at that look how much better that looks than the original blur you see that it took an extra minute but you would never even know that there's a tail number on there so we'll we'll set it up like that that's the right way to do it okay so we showed you first how to lasso using your little lasso tool a lot of different lassos this one's a, a creative one that you got polygonal that's the one I used and then you created you right once you created your polygonal tool you right clicked and and created a copy of the layer that you're on so it created a copy to work with so that you didn't ruin your original copy now in that case I made a huge mistake I ruined my original copy I probably shouldn't have but that's okay because um, yeah so so I ruined my original copy so it's hard to go back without undoing it all but I did a pretty good job and I wouldn't do that if I were me but you could also just create new copies and test and turn them on and off and test them like I did okay this is Josh Oaks thanks for watching uh, subscribe to this video, comment below if you have any questions. It's always great to have you. And as always, keep it light, bright, and polite. Have a great day.